Hey there everybody and welcome to the 2019 Geneva Motor Show. We're going to get started straight away here at the Skoda stand. So anyone who knows me will know that Skoda is quite close to my heart. I've owned a couple of them in the past and own one currently. And what we have next to me, so on my right or your left, we've got the all new Skoda Scala. And on my left or your right is the all new Skoda Kamek. Now these cars are very important for Skoda. They are both based on the new MQB A0 platform. They're the first two cars to be on that platform based for Skoda. And the Kamek, well, will that be very familiar to a lot of uh, a lot of VW fans because you have got the Seat Arona and the all new Volkswagen T-Cross on which they're, in which they're based. And on my right with the Skoda Scala, that's actually going to be a bit of an oddball because although it is based on the same platform as the Volkswagen Polo and the Seat Ibiza, it's a much bigger car. It's got a humongous boot, dwarfs even that of the new Ford Focus. And the big surprise out of both of them is not they're just the new design on the exterior, but also on the interior. We've got some lovely soft touch plastics. The infotainment screen is actually kind of raised up on the dash and floating, which went with it quite a what, futuristic look. And I have to say, it's just, well, it's a really nice, you know, look for Skoda and it shows that they're moving forward with the times. My worry? Well, Volkswagen with their new T-Cross, it's looking a little bit boring. But let me know what you think. Click down in the uh, comment section below and put any uh, questions you want down there. So keeping it within the Volkswagen family behind me, we've got the new Volkswagen T-Cross. Based on the Volkswagen Polo platform, it rivals cars such as the Seat Arona and the Skoda Kamek that you've just seen. Prices for the T-Cross are at the tail end of £17,000, with the Arona at just over £17,000 and the Kamek at £17,500. I will say I was quite disappointed with the interior. There's a lot of hard scratchy plastics in there, considering it is based on the Polo, which has a lot of soft squidgy plastics. So that was a bit disappointing. It's very much like the T-Roc, it's big brother in that regard. Speaking of the T-Roc, we also had the debut of the T-Roc R. Very much like the Cooper Attacker and the new Audi SQ2, in which they all share the same platform. It again has the same engine as those two other cars with a two litre, four cylinder, turbocharged petrol engine producing 296 brake horsepower. Power going to all four wheels, just like its two uh, brothers, and again going through a DSG gearbox. Again, the big surprise is that there was no soft touch plastics for this top of the range model on the t rock and that was quite disappointing. So if I was to pick one of those three, I possibly would go with the Cooper Ateca. It looks cooler, especially with those copper accents, and uh, will probably be a bit cheaper too. Right, we've got a bit of a trend going on here because we're now over at Seat and Cupra, again part of the Volkswagen family. And with Cupra, they have got a concept car on display with the new Fermenta. It shares the same platform as the Ateca and comes as a hybrid. And we're looking at the car, I've got to say it looks less like a concept and looks more production ready. As a hybrid and plug-in hybrid, it should have a range of around 30 miles and again using the 2.0-litre four-cylinder turbocharged engine producing 296 brake horsepower. Also on the stand we have the Il Born and that is a new car from Seat. It is a fully electric car and it is showing Seat's intentions of bringing an electric car to production. I have to say again, looking at this car, it looks incredibly lovely to look at. It's actually bigger than when you see pictures of it and looks like a proper family sized car. I'd love to see a production version of it because it would probably have a huge boot and a lot of rear space for passengers. But we'll be looking at a possible production in 2020. And then finally, well, it's behind me. And I'm just gonna say it's the new Seat Twizy because they've reinvented the electric for uh, little buggy for a single seater car. It's got a range of around 60 miles and it's like a little urban run around, but it's, it's, it's a say out version of the Renault Twizy, but looks a lot better. So making its debut at the Geneva Motor Show is the Lamborghini Aventador SVJ Roadster. I'm not gonna say anything else, just have a look at it. Behind me is the new Audi Q4 
for e-tron concept. So following in the e-tron's footsteps is another SUV. Apparently it's actually bigger than the e-tron, although it doesn't look too much bigger. I will say it looks quite the same size. It's powered by 225 kilowatt electric motor. I'm not sure what that is in brake horsepower, but you'll see it come along at the bottom of the screen. 0 to 60 is around about 6.3 seconds. It's quite a handsome car, I will say. It's kind of showing Audi's change in the way they're designing their cars, especially as they want to do a lot more electric vehicles in the coming years. But the highlight, and I really can't wait to see a production version of this, is if my cameraman will pan to the right, we have got the e-tron GT concept. So behind me, well, if you can see it behind me, is the new Koenigsegg Jesko. So don't say it as it's spelt, because it's not the Jesko, it's the Jesko, and it's uh, it paying homage to Christian von Koenigsegg's father for helping him out getting his supercar, and now hypercar company, up and running. There are a couple of key figures you need to know. If you put some regular gas in that thing, you'll have around 1,260 brake horsepower. However, if you put E85 in there, it goes all the way up to 1,600 brake horsepower. And Koenigsegg are claiming, and through the simulators and everything online, that this car can do 300 miles per hour. Well, we have to see it first to believe it, but if it can do that, that's a hell of an astonishing machine, and I really think Bugatti should be quaking in their boots, really. So guys, if you managed to read that, essentially, Tony Piech is providing um, modules, the chassis, powertrains and that for other companies, so they can actually build their cars on top of it and provide different types of platforms. He's looking at two-seater sports cars, four-seater sports cars, and also performance SUVs. He's the son of Ferdinand Piech, who is the former chairman of Volkswagen Group, and there's some story going on here that he's gone and bought a black car here, but you probably guys, you know more than me. So Aston Martin have come to the Geneva Motor Show with not one, not two, but three mid-engine supercars and hypercars. Okay, one we already know about with the Aston Martin Valkyrie, but they've also surprised us all with the new Vanquish Vision and the AMRB003. I think that's just a code name for the moment. It'll probably have a real name later on, closer to production. But as you can see, they have got very similar body styles to them. They both look epically gorgeous, and they're both going to be powered by Aston Martin's V6 engine. However, the AMRB003, as a bit of a tongue twister, is going to have a few more brake horsepowers under the bonnet, as it will be hybridised as well. Prices at the minute, well. Nothing's been announced yet, but we can imagine it's going to be starting with the Vanquish with about 300, 400,000 pound, moving on up to six figures, maybe even seven for the uh, RB003, and of course with the Valkyrie. So we're here at the Toyota stand, and of course the big news is going to be about the new Corolla and the Corolla GR. But I got to be honest, I've come straight to the new Toyota Supra. Now I know there's been a lot of talk and a lot of negative talk about this car's looks and the whole kind of alliance with BMW sharing the platform and the engines and gearbox etc. But you've really got to see it in the metal to actually appreciate it. It's a stunning car. I did see this last year at Goodwood although it was lightly yet heavily disguised with a kind of a, uh, a weird camouflage wrap but Seeing it here in production ready mode, it actually looks absolutely stunning. I love the grey. I'm not 100% sure on the red, but you decide. Click up in the top right hand corner which colour you uh, you prefer, or if you prefer another colour in fact. But no, I'm very much looking forward to being able to have a drive of this thing. So uh, Toyota, if you're watching, please invite me to the launch. But um, I'm very much impressed with it. And yes, I'm impressed with the Corolla as well. Particularly the fact it's a good hybrid very economical but it hasn't got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and that's definitely something that Toyota needs to reconsider. Here at the Lexus stand we've got the RCF Track Edition. So this is a revised version of the RC and we've got the RCF so it's got the naturally aspirated 5 litre V8 but with this Track Edition we've got a few added bells and whistles and that carbon fibre spoiler being one of them. 
I'm loving the matte paint job as well. I have driven an RCF before at one of the uh, test days and it was an absolute hoot to drive. So I cannot wait to take this out for a little test drive. I'm loving the new headlights as well. They seem to be toned down a bit. There's no that double double section of lights. It's only the single, uh, single piece. But it works. It works very well. It's still very distinctive and has that very distinctive grille. I am very much appreciating Lexus's design language. The Lexus LC 500 convertible concept. Quite simply, don't leave this as a concept anymore, Lexus. Just build the bloody thing. So how do you make Europe's best small family car even better? Well, you hardly change it on the outside and that's what Renault have done with the new Clio. They have said it's an evolution on the outside but a revolution on the inside and they, well, they're not wrong. The outside, it now carries the famous C segment on the light section, very much in the context of the uh, Renault Megane and also the larger Colios. But it's the inside where all the changes are happening. There's a new portrait touchscreen, there's a new uh, set of inter inside materials, and actually it feels a lot more plush than it was before. It has a lot more hard scratchy plastics on that Mark IV, but on the Mark V, it definitely feels like an all new car. You'll get the usual petrols and diesels, and next year there will be a hybrid coming. So uh, look forward to that if you do a lot of town driving, because they should have the ability to do around 30 miles of uh, range just driving on the battery on its own. Coming out later in this year, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Arguably the sexiest looking concept car here at Geneva has to be the new Alfa Romeo Tonali. Now, if you uh, don't use any Italian, that does actually look a little bit like toenail, but um, we'll avoid that one. This is actually a hybrid SUV, the first one for Alfa Romeo, and yeah, it's absolutely sexy as hell. Now, I am going to pan over to uh, Jeep, and you're probably wondering why I'm just going to pan straight over to Jeep. Now, they've actually got some plug-in hybrids. Now, a lot of people may think, well, this, might, this is kind of news that may go unnoticed, but the Renegade and the Compass, as you can see there, they've got little charging ports next to them, so they are plug-in hybrids. They've got around about 13 miles of range on them, and I believe it's around 240 brake horsepower in each, and the actual battery works as an additional horsepower unit. That's a bit of a unique one, just in case anyone missed it. And that special something is the new Ferrari F8 Tributo. So it is based on the 488 Pisto, carries the same V8 engine, but has a lot of parking back to previous Ferraris and classic Ferraris. You can see there with the uh, dual cluster tail lights. It is a very stunning car to look at. Has the same S duct on the front as the 488 Pisto. And um, well, other than that, it's, that's about it. It's kind of. It's kind of really just a facelifted 488. I think we'll have to leave it there, won't we? So I might have said that the Alfa Romeo Tonali was the sexiest looking concept at Geneva. But I have to say just the best concept of all has to be this. The Honda e-prototype. Okay, it's no longer a concept. It's a very close to production car. But just look at it. You don't even have to drive it and you can see it's got bags of character. I don't see this as a car, I see this as a little puppy dog and I just want to put it in my pocket and take it home. It's absolutely lovely. Honda are claiming around 125 miles of range when it goes on sale later this year or even early in 2020. Prices, nothing's been confirmed, but being Honda, they have mentioned that it is going to be kind of kind of a lifestyle vehicle, so in the same sense of like Mini and with Alfa Romeo, uh, sorry, not Alfa Romeo, Fiat with the 500, so we are probably looking at northwards of £25,000. Space-wise, well, it's going to be quite a small car. I mean, you can see it behind me, it's not the biggest, but I will say the uh, interior is absolutely stunning. There are six screens in that interior. Three of them are dedicated straight to the mirrors. Two on the uh, wing mirrors and one for the central mirror. So there's actually a camera in the back, which has a special coating to stop the, uh, the weather from blocking your rear visibility. But it's an absolutely gorgeous little car. I love it and I can't wait to see it next year. At the Mazda stand, we've got the all-new CX-30. 
bit of a quirky name considering we've got the CX-3 and the CX-5 but it does sit between them and this is definitely following in Mazda's new design language I mean it's a stunning looking car this kind of evolution in their Kodo design it's just absolutely lovely they always look good in their soul red Mazda are very much on the ball when it comes to their styling. Now a car that you would already have seen from last year, and I'm going to go over to it now, is the new Mazda 3. So this was unveiled last year in the US and it is here for the first time at Geneva. Again I'm loving the Kodo design or the new kind of evolution in the Kodo design. The front end looks very Mazda-esque. We kind of lose some of the creases and curves that we had on the previous generation and then we've got these gorgeous tail lights I mean that's just I mean that's a sexy rear end isn't it comment down below if you uh, disagree or if you agree with me or want to give me an alternative maybe the alternative is the Mazda 3 but in saloon form here we go I'm gonna be nice and quick But how about that for a, uh, a sexy rear end? And also, what do we think about the colours? Do we prefer the gunmetal or do we prefer the soul red? Comment up, uh, well no, actually click in the top right hand corner and let me know what you think. Right. So when it comes to styling, you've got to admit Peugeot's definitely on the roll and they've now unveiled the new Peugeot 208 here at Geneva and it is a funky little family hatchback. It's taken on the likes of the Ford Fiesta and the Volkswagen Polo. It's definitely a competitor in the class, if not as spacious as some of its rivals. But its interior is a joy to behold. There's a lovely array of soft touch plastics and high quality materials. And well, in terms of powertrains, you've got the usual petrols you've got the diesel and there will be an all-electric version which is going to be called surprisingly the E208. I'll personally say avoid the diesel and just stick with the petrols and the electric version. Now we'll have a range, uh, Peugeot have claimed of around 211 miles that's up through WLTP but uh, should be out later this year and cannot wait to drive it. Go. So everybody, I hope you've enjoyed this video of uh, my roundup of the Geneva Motor Show 2019. If I've missed anything, of course, let me know. Put it in the comments section down below. Don't forget to subscribe on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter because there will be additional videos and uh, still photos on there. Don't forget to like this video, click that subscribe button and also the bell notifications icon to let you know when Also Bears brings out a new video. Right, that's been the Geneva Motor Show. It's starting to wind down and I've got a plane to catch. So everyone, have yourself a great day and I'll see you all in the next video.